lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Do you have an upcoming event? Well, I encourage you to book Beyond Defense Family for an amazing experience. Beyond Defense is a talented group of men and women who have toured the world to display the talents of song and ministry. Did I forget to mention multi award winners? They're your one stop shop for making your events the best in the city. Book Beyond Defense today at beyonddefense.org. Click menu, then contact. Beyond Defense, your audience will thank you. much pain Doing things you told me not to do Lord, I need a healing touch from you So I asked the Lord if he would change my heart A touch from you would provide a brand new Question. I wonder 
to be healthy, to be whole, to be strong. And also we focus on, in the month of June, Alzheimer's and brain awareness situations. The function of the brain, key, that's key. No function of the brain, no us, right? So this is the month we focus on that, um, Alzheimer's and brain awareness. By this being June 25th, somebody's having a wedding anniversary, wants to say happy anniversary to you, and somebody is having a birthday, so happy birthday to you. Of course, you know, we focus on women winning at life, and today we want to talk about good leadership. That's one of my favorite topics is leadership. Good leadership, that's what we want to focus on. But just before we get to that, we do have a few more points to cover do want to say on June 25th, designated in 1987 by a presidential proclamation under Ronald Reagan, this became National Catfish Day. This became National Catfish Day. Sounds like a good meal to me. Followed by that, you can have your dessert, right? It's also National Strawberry Parfait Day. That sounds like a great meal to me. Catfish and Strawberry Parfait. Well, today, these these two things are recognized and uh, can be put into your menu for the week even. So um, my couple of news items is that the stimulus checks uh, came out, and according to Politico, the Internal Revenue Service paid more than $1 million in stimulus checks to deceased people because it initially believed it could not withhold the money. Wow. Wow. And in other news, the president, number 45, um, his niece has an all a tell-all book. She has a tell-all book about him. My goodness. Ooh, that sounds like it's going to be some juicy stuff. And what makes it more juicy, and it could be uh, a strategy now, guys. It could be a strategy because here's the deal. His younger brother tried to get the book blocked, according to sources in the news, but the court dismissed the case. The court dismissed the case and said, no, she can put her book out. But the mere fact that he's trying to block it can pique people's interest, and they all want to run out and go get it. So I'm just saying. So she's got a tell-all book about 45. I think many of us can write a book about it, too. (laughs) based on what we've seen over these few years. Oh, my God. She has all the intimate details. Ooh, all the intimate, juicy stuff. Yes, indeed. Um, He's quite a character, I must say. All right, good people. We want to talk today about uh, good leadership and um, the law of intuition. I love John C. Maxwell. I love his writings and I have a few of his books, Um, I want to focus on some of the high points coming from his 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. Follow them, and people will follow you. So I want to look at the law of intuition, the law of intuition, you know. And we always say a woman's intuition, a woman's intuition. Yeah, we want to talk about Intuition, the law of intuition. Leaders evaluate everything with a leadership bias, not just a bias, but the leadership bias. If you want to be a good leader, right, a good leader, it doesn't mean you have to have 150 programs a year to be a good leader. If you want to be a good leader, it doesn't mean that, you know, you've got to uh, award people with money and this and that and the other. You know, transactional leadership does that. You know, it will award you with the gift when we're happy with you, and we would cause a punishment to come upon you when we're angry with you. That's called transactional leadership. But I find that that's the kind of leadership that people executed when I was a little girl And I used to think, I want to be a leader one day, a boss. I want to be large and in charge. 
so that I could push people around. I could bully people around. I can tell them if you don't like what I'm saying, you could hit the dough. That was in my little immature mind. I said, oh, when I get to be grown and I get to be a boss and I get to be a leader, I'm going to be able to tell them, don't do as I do. Do as I say. I'm going to have the weight to throw around. And unfortunately, that's kind of way we were handled in the days of slavery. We could not do as the master did. We had to do as the master said, right? We were bullied and bossed around. We didn't have control of our own bodies. If master wanted to lay with one of us, we had to lay with him. There was no such thing as I don't feel good, I have a headache, or this is not right, or you had no control. But as little children, of course, this is the thing that I thought was cool, to be the boss, large, and in charge. But then as I grew up and I matured and I did a, you know, uh, a 10-year in-depth study into leadership, into what is considered good, excellent leadership, I learned things that ended up costing me things later on because now that was my measuring tool for everybody's leadership. I looked at it and I said, well, no, this is not what I call good leadership. This is not what I call fair leadership. So that became my measuring tool, my 10 years of in-depth study as to what a good, effective, positive, encouraging, supportive, inspiring leader is. And so everybody else's leadership, you know, that did not hit some of those points failed terribly in my eyes and could not really uh, help the situation that we found ourselves in uh, and you being the forefront without the knowledge and somebody behind you with the knowledge, that's not good. You know, that's not good unless you guys are really two peas in a pod and they are really there helping you to get to that next level. But you got to, as that leader who really don't understand or don't know, you have to be open to letting that person help you. So, again, we want to talk about the law of intuition in leadership. When I talk about intuition, as I checked out a quick definition, it says intuition is the ability to understand something without a need for conscious reasoning. Intuition is annoying. It's a kind of annoying. It's like, see, discernment, that's annoying too. Uh, intuition is a kind of knowing. You're understanding something without a need for conscious reasoning. That's only probably a part of what intuition is, but that's a very important part. Uh, if you're just tuning in, by the way, I'm Loretta Petit, and you're listening to the Loretta Petit Show, Women Winning at Life, from ministry to marketplace. Woo! You know how many hats that could be? From ministry to marketplace. Oh, my God. Think about it for a second. Hmm. From ministry to marketplace. Guys, listen, if you'd like to connect with me, I'd love to connect with you. Send your uh, your communications to me via email. You can send them to LorettaReviews at gmail.com. That's Loretta Reviews at gmail.com. Hit me up on Facebook under Loretta Petite. Let me know that you heard the podcast. You got questions or comments. You can also find me on Instagram. My handle is I am Loretta Petite. I am Loretta Petite. If you want to hit me up on Twitter, I'm Preach Girl. So find me at Preach Girl on Twitter, okay? So we're talking about intuition, the ability to understand something without the need for conscious reasoning. So when we look at the law of intuition, Maxwell asked the question, do you remember the old television show Dragnet? He says, if you do, then you probably know that Jack Webb used to use this phrase, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. Yes, he always did. And of all of the laws of leadership, the law of intuition is probably the most difficult to understand, and that is because this law depends so much more on so much more rather than just the facts, right? The law of intuition is based on 
facts plus instinct and other intangible factors. And the reality is that leadership intuition is often the factor that separates the greatest leaders from the merely good ones and those who are even lesser than that. So if you can remember some years ago, um, Maxwell had a staff member named Tim Elmore, if you follow him, but sometimes, you know, we have people that we follow and he's a good one to follow. And he's going to share just some insights into what went on, and uh, you'll be able to understand maybe the law of intuition a little bit better. He says that, this is Maxwell talking, it occurred when we lived in San Diego and three players were competing on the Chargers football team for the starting quarterback's position. Tim, he means Tim Elmore. He asked me who I thought would secure the job. And without hesitation, I said, Stan Humphreys. Really, Tim replied, I didn't think he had a chance. He's not all that big, and they say he doesn't have a strong work ethic in the weight room. He doesn't even really look like a quarterback. That doesn't matter, I said. He's a better leader. Watch Stan play, and you'll see that he has the ability to read just about any situation, call the right play, and pull it off. He's the one who will get the job, and Stan did get the job. He was so good that he was able to lead a fairly weak San Diego team to the Super Bowl in 1995. All professional quarterbacks have physical talent. At the pro level, the differences in physical ability really aren't that significant. What makes one man a third string backup and another a Hall of Famer is intuition. The great ones can see things that others can't, make changes and move forward before others know what's happening. So that is a picture of what intuition is in leadership. The intuition in leadership. So keep in mind that a leader has to read the situation and know instinctively what play to call. Now, a lot of people are calling plays. A lot of people are saying this is this or this is that or this is the other. Um, but a good, a great leader will know how to read a situation and know instinctively what call to play. Now, let me bring that out of sports and into our everyday lives. When you're looking at, again, remember I told you this is one of my favorite topics to talk about leadership, right? Love, love, love it. And in order to help you to win at leadership, I like to sometimes sit with you as if I'm sitting by a fireside and we're having a fireside chat. <laughs> I want to say to you that some things are very, very important when you're leading people. I've made a lot of mistakes. Even though I knew better, I didn't do better. We should do better when we know better. But sometimes we act impulsively on situations and, and the urgencies and the emergencies, and we forget that the people that we are talking to are people. They're not animals. Of course, they're adult people, and they're not children who really need, the little children need you to take their hand and to guide them, to slap their hands and say, no, no, you know. But adults, when you're dealing with adults, when you're dealing with adults, you want to be able to let them feel that they are an integral part of what you are doing. You want to first and foremost respect the individual. You don't have to hover over them and make them feel like it's a big I and it's a little you. You don't have to say, oh, I have all these degrees and these letters behind my name. No, people don't care what you know. They don't care, to, they don't care about what you know until they know that you care. Now, people want to know first and foremost that a leader cares. And if a person believes that their leader cares, many times they will jump through hoops for that leader. Hello, somebody. If they believe that, that believe, now believe is deep, believe is heavy. Believe. Believe, you got to believe. Now, if you believe that that leader cares about you, cares about your well-being, 
you are probably willing to jump through hoops for that leader. It is when that leader sees the actions and calls the wrong plays and never, ever allows that follower to believe that they care. If that follower never believes that that leader cares, then that leader is about to lose that follower. Hello, somebody. I want you to understand a great leader is going to read a situation and is going to know instinctively how to call that play or what play to call. They're going to instinctively know that. Now, if you feel like, well, I'm not that instinctive, well, there's a little thing called questions. You ask questions. You say, are you okay? I saw this happen or I saw that happen, and I wanted to know how I can help you to do better with that or how I can help you. Let's go out to coffee. Let's talk about some of the challenges. Because I want to really be there for you, you know, or in these days, get a Zoom chat going and say, you know, I really care about the challenges that you're carrying right now. How can we make that a little bit lighter or a little bit easier for you to bear? When a person knows that their leader cares, that makes all of the difference in the world. So seek as a leader to be a leader that has a strong sense of intuition. Seek that. Ask God for that. God will take the covers off of that place of intuition for you. So you'll be able now to see it, to feel it, to be sharper in that area. All right? Leaders are readers of their situation. In all kinds of circumstances, they capture details that elude others. For example, here's another example from a... Um, uh, for Maxwell, he says that he was a senior pastor at Skyline, his church in San Diego. There were times when he was required to travel for long periods of time. And often he said when he returned after being gone for 10 to 14 days, he could tell that something was going on. He said he could feel it. And usually in an hour or so of talking with his staff and getting the pulse of what was going on, he'd be able to track down the problem. So remember that leaders are what readers of their situation. Leaders are readers of of trends. Leaders are readers of their resources. Leaders are are leaders are readers of their people. President Lyndon Johnson once said that when you walk into a room, if you can't tell who's for you and who's against you, you don't belong in politics. That's what he said. That statement also applies to leadership. Intuitive leaders can sense what's happening among people and almost instantly know their hopes, their fears, and their concerns. So seek to be an outstanding, great, effective leader. Ask God to help you because you have an assignment, I have an assignment. God has given all of us some type of an assignment. Some people are still sitting in the boat. When the Lord has said, get out and walk on the water, God wants us to be effective, but not apart from him. So we must always go back to him who is our source and say, okay, Father, I recognize I need you to help me to lead these people in this assignment that you have given me. Leaders are readers of themselves as well. Finally, great leaders develop the ability to read themselves their strengths, their skills, their weaknesses, and their current state of mind. They recognize the truth of what James Russell Lover said when he said, no one can produce great things who is not thoroughly sincere in dealing with himself. So seek to know yourself. Seek to be an intuitive leader. Seek to be an outstanding, effective, a great leader. And know these three things. Three levels of leadership of the that one that's intuitive, that leadership intuition is going to bring you, one, to those who naturally see it, number two, those who are nurtured to see it, and then you have, unfortunately, that third category, 
those who will never see it. I hope today that you have been encouraged, that you have been strengthened on your journey. As I leave, though, I want to leave you with this word from Les Brown. Les Brown said, remember this. You are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. Make your goal one of leadership intuition. Ask God to help you with that this week. Purpose in your heart to seek after being more intuitive as you lead others, especially when you get that opportunity to lead others to Christ. Be able to scan the situation, understand the situation, be able to be a leader who is a reader of what's happening in his or her surroundings. Again, I want to give a shout out to my awesome producer, Miss Kimmy Kim. I thank God for you, woman of God. Reach out to me, guys, if you want to, if you need to. Uh, I'm Loretta Reviews at gmail.com. Loretta Reviews at gmail.com. Have a great, prosperous, and healthy week. Stay safe, gloves on, mask on, social distancing. This has been the Loretta Petit Show, Women Winning at Life from Ministry to Marketplace. I'm Loretta Petit, and I'm winning at life. Bye-bye. Down for the count You feel like life has thrown you close And God ain't been around But I've come to encourage you To hold your head high Know that God is in your corner now No more inner life Just can't lose. Who burn a kale more than a conqueror? Jesus in you. You are a winner. You are born to win. Who burn a kale more than a conqueror? Power with. Just